Hey, what's going on guys? Today, we're gonna talk about the secret sauce to a tastefully done mass transition. How's it going guys? My name is Say Park and those are the mass transition I've done over the past year. Some were done tastefully, some were done slightly salty. Since mass transition's been around for so long, I probably don't have to explain too much on what it is. Okay, just so that everyone's on the same page. Alexa, what's mass transition? It's a video transition technique where previous clip is partially covered to move into the next clip. Yeah, more or less, if you're really brand new to this, I'll put a basic mass transition tutorial right here and we'll be on the same page. Okay, now it could be debated who really started mass transition on YouTube. Sam Calder, Matt Como, Leonardo D'Alessandri, that's the dude who made the Watchtower Turkey. Of course, Hollywood's been using it a lot longer, but who really revolutionized it on YouTube? You guys remember the like, first time seeing it and you're just like, well, what did I just watch? Let me know in the comments below because uh, I'm not sure. But what I am sure now is that it is way overused and some are done not so tastefully now. Myself guilty sometimes, but today we'll do YouTube and myself a service and talk about the four secret sauce of pulling off a mass transition tastefully. We'll start at the end and count down. But first, we need to find someone who does mass transition really well. Alexa, find a new YouTuber who does sick mass transitions. I'm searching. Wait, yeah, that guy, Joseph Garcia. I seen Joseph's video, this guy is so good at speed ramping and mass transitions, perfect. All right, so secret sauce number four. Two clips connected by the mass should move in the same direction. Sometimes this is obvious, sometimes this is very subtle. Joseph does this really, really well. Check out this clip. Right there, that was some triple double move. Yeah, you see these three clips? They all suddenly move in the same direction and Joseph masked out some of these foreground objects. Yeah. This is done so clean guys, us viewers doesn't even think about it. It all has to do with the movement of our eyes. It's like really thought out composition. We think of where the audience eye movement is going. Gotcha. This is especially important if the clips are moving fast just like Joseph's. Let's look at one more example though. This is from one of the weddings I shot and edited. I know I'm probably making some people really uncomfortable. See what? You did a mass transition in a wedding film? That's just poor taste. Hey, hold your horse radish for a second. Let me show you first. If you look at this clip carefully, there are foreground objects in both the clips and they move in the same direction. Foreground objects help because it gives you depth, which in turn gives you sense of consistent movement and direction. Imagine without the foreground object and you won't get the same sense that the camera is actually moving a lot. So moving on to the secret sauce number three. Don't make your mass sequence too long. There isn't a magical number and it really depends on how the film flows, but I find that anything longer than like 10 to 15 frames for mask is way too long. Mass transitions should almost mask the fact that you did a mass transition. Now try to say that really fast. Mass transition should have masked the fact that trend Mass transition should mask the fact that you did a mass transition. Woo! <laughs> If the mask goes across the screen for like 30 frames, chugga chugga chugga, yeah, the audience is gonna get like distracted by focusing on the transition rather than the story of the film. Now, if you wanna be like, check out this mask, yeah, by all means, try a 30 frame mask, but use it sparingly. Most times though, I recommend 15 to 10. Here's a 15 frame mask transition example. Yeah, you can kind of see the sweet spot, right? Anything longer than that, it would have kind of broken the flow of that film. You also notice that I did move the camera to the left in both of the clips. 10 to 15 frame is also a good number since any flaws in the mass itself is not as noticeable. If you run into an issue where mass is so noticeable because the object you mass is so sharp, consider using a little directional blur. 
So combining secret sauce number four and number three, you got yourself a good recipe. If you want the next level masking though, you gotta now combine the secret number two and number one. And those secrets are on Joseph's channel. If you haven't guessed it already, this video has been a collaboration with Joseph. And honestly guys, by doing this video, uh, I learned that I have been doing masks like wrong sometimes. So go check out his mask transition video in the description below guys and subscribe to his channel and, and make sure you come back because uh, his channel is kind of dope. You, you, might, you might not come back. I'm gonna have to do another giveaway video or something. On that note, hope to see you in the next video guys and make it a good one. Later.